Good evening and welcome to North Andover CAM's annual meeting. Um, I'm Brian Frazier, the executive director, and um, the annual meeting is a time where we uh, take a moment to uh, look over the last year in review and celebrate uh, all the accomplishments of North Andover CAM, but also celebrate the accomplishments of North Andover CAM through its membership, because we, we don't do much except for enable our members. So um, that's what we look forward to doing tonight. And if I could, I'm gonna start with introductions. We'll start with our board uh, of directors and I'll let them introduce themselves. Supposed to be on camera, I guess. Uh, my name is Michael Hale. I am the uh, president of the CAM board and I rule it with an iron fist. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> my name is Peter Bales. I'm on the board of directors. Uh, been here for what, 10 years, 15 years? Forever. Yeah, right. I've been here forever. And I started out videotaping John and Dave, my two boys, in the band with my little camera. And Brian was having a big giant camera going on there. And ended up getting on the board, and I've been here ever since. So it's a pleasure to work with Brian. Hi, I'm Linda Burns. I am also a member of the board and also had a start with uh, North Andover Music Association uh, filming the band and chorus. Uh, and music events in town. And it's been a pleasure to be on the board with these gentlemen and lovely to work with Cam. Hi, my name is Steve Ventry. I'm the treasurer of North Andover Cam. I've been serving on the board for about the last 10 years or so. Pleasure to do so. And uh, tonight the staff is uh, behind the scenes. Uh, Bill, uh, Bill, Nick, Yasmina, and our intern Leo is on the camera here with some volunteers. So uh, we thank you to the staff for uh, doing the job behind the scenes. Um, as far as, um, I think we're gonna, we're gonna do some things a little bit different this year. We, um, we, a lot of times we have a highlight video and um, it's a little too long to run into the, into the program itself. So this year we condensed it. Um, I'm gonna preface it with, we did a lot of Brady bunching just to compress all the information. So uh, all those that you still know the term Brady Bunch, um, you'll see the, 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 the different sh uh, videos in, in the quadrants, but um, I think we're ready to take a quick look at that. And they should roll it. You'll see it on that screen over there. And if we, yep, we're good. I hear a lot of people saying that they don't have reliable transportation to get from point A yeah. to point B in order to actually get a job and work. Yeah. Um, and I think knowing about this and a functioning... It's going to change the... Exactly. Yeah. This budget continues to have that commitment to Facilities Match Plan 2. We're saving debt in it like we were before. But even more exciting is that we have the first debt payment for the middle school. We discuss, as we just noted, these articles together. They deal essentially with the same interests. Does anybody have any discussion that they would like or query? Please come forward.
no hurry there. You don't really want to leave Hannah Martin alone in the corner. At least uh, I don't. I wouldn't, Max, but... Big to Zelensky. McNaught, touchdown. Coach John Dubzinski loved that. He gave it Beautiful. a big fist pump. Yeah. We're eagerly awaiting a transition to the new center, which means the staff has been very busy. Every year, every year, even growing up as a kid, looking forward to going back to school, but the feast. Now, a heartwarming and action moments to keep the movie action moment movie, so it turned out to be a decent movie. Specifically, that people that are easy for people to do at home by themselves or with their families, it's going to be really, really fun. He had turned us on to this, um, this documentary that happened in England with um, some psychic mediums. Hello everyone, this is Kevin Manch and this is Kev's TV series. And in today's topic, it's another talk show of Stranger Things. Okay, Mrs. Claus, we have Dylan on the phone, age six. Hello, Dylan. So there is no red card. You owe me four dollars. Wait, if the red card is on the bottom, it can't be on the top. You owe me five dollars. reports of extreme flooding in businesses and residential areas and the fire department was forced to rescue residents from their home. So Scarlett's role with me is going to be my partner. I'm going to go everywhere with her. We had uh, K-9 Gibbs before with Officer Primus. Today they're making breakfast for dinner actually. So they're making French toast. They'll be making omelets from scratch where they'll be able to make and flip their own omelets and they'll be making zucchini tops. Uh, so that's our year in a review video, uh, and I, I'm going to apologize to my audience at home, but I'm going to talk the, to the audience here. So if I'm looking off camera, it's because the rest of the audience is over here. Um, <clears throat> the neat thing about that video is, is that's um, you know, a snapshot of all the different types of shows we um, have going on. on the, and if you notice, it was the three different channels. So we have GovCam, CamEd, and then the Access Channel. Um, obviously self-explanatory, but the gov government channel is for anything municip state, municipal, state, and gov uh, federal government related stuff. Uh, education, CAMED, is typically for um, anything produced by the school system or a little bit of a hybrid with sports because a lot of our members will produce the sports programming, but that's also aired on those channels uh, relative to uh, that channel relative to the school system. And, uh, and then CAM Access is everything else. Um, it, it, you know, a, lot of, a lot of churches, um, in, 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 um, in point of interest type shows, that type of thing. Um, seeing the blocks of different programs that are up there, it was just the kind of variety of what's, what's out there, but there's also obviously multiple shows. You know, you might have seen a talk show, but there were five or six of so-and-so's talk show. Talk show. Um, you know, that in the sports, you know, hockey games, you know, basketball games, there was multiple uh, uh, games covered by the, uh, uh, the members themselves. So it didn't make too much sense to just rifle them all off because they were on quick enough as it is. Um, and uh, we're, we're using it as a, 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 you know, a commercial. If you're interested in any of them, go watch the channel or look them up online. Um, so I, I am... Um, I'm, I'm hearing a, a little bit of extra noise in here, but um, the, uh, I, I forgot to mention Liam Ryan is our high school intern. So as I raced through the, the beginning opening, uh, I, I forgot to mention Leo, Liam back in the control room. So um, trying to, you know, I was trying to change up the meeting a little bit to not go through the PowerPoint, you know, page for page. Um, it's, it's easy to do and reference, but we're just going to try and highlight or talk a little bit more about, you know, the things that we've done 
we'll report in on our numbers and, and uh, our metrics that we look at each year. But um, you can always find the, the annual report online. And um, but for tonight, we're just trying to you know showcase. Uh, I've been to enough annual meetings around town now, including the historical society. I want to I want to be like them. They 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 have good an, uh, annual meetings too. Um, so tonight we're gonna I'm gonna bring uh, next on the agenda is uh, our youth member report. Uh, and Nick Kissel is making his third, fourth, fifth, fifth. Uh, Fifth uh, approach up here. I'm going to leave you at the podium, and I'll be right back. You can speak into this mic. All right. Thanks for having me for a fifth time. Yeah, I've been doing this for a while, and it will be my last time being the youth rep, which, you know, is a bit sad. And But I'm a senior in high school, moving on to college and all that stuff. But I look forward to what's next. And... Hopefully I can come back to CAM and see a healthy youth program continuing to run. And I guess what do the youth members have to say right now? And I mean, we had a bit of a downtime for a little bit about programs, but now that we're back in full throttle, they seem to be really just enjoying all the workshops going on. We've had a thriving population of uh, high or middle school students. I've seen a lot of them around. A lot of them came to the youth meeting this year, and it was great to see all of them and just having a healthy program because I remember when I was in middle school and I wasn't seeing that many people around and like high schoolers and such but now it's like really doing well and our sports is continuing to do well too for f football basketball is, we're getting productions going and workshops are doing really well they're enjoying the new staff so they're welcoming happy to see that happen and yeah we already picked the next youth reps, I think. So thank you for having me. <laughs> and uh, hopefully the youth program will continue to run well. And I think it has run well. And it's continued to improve. Thank you. And there's our youth putting me to shame because he spoke so calmly and eloquently. And I'm up here rushing going, I know I forgot to say something. I, I, um, he's been uh, great to have around, and uh, today he is, I believe, technical director in there. So I'm not sure who was running the show while I was out here, but uh, he loves he loves the technology side of things. So um, he, uh, he 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 uh, has the right to choose his positions. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, I know the Bruins are on tonight, so we're gonna we're gonna keep that in mind. Um, am I allowed to say? Do I need permission to to say know. Bruins? <laughs> All right, so looking back at 2023, um, we went through our board. Uh, our staff list on our screen is a little long. Um, this has been a, a big changeover year, so um, we just got to the, one of the points of having four, you know, four full-timers, including me, on staff with two uh, contractors that run the meetings, because we, ideally we don't want to have our staff uh, covering meetings, we have contractors to do that, so the the staff members can be here with the membership during their their time. Um, so um, there's we've had a couple contractors come and go. Um, and this year, um, uh, Gabby Griffiths, who a lot of you know, um, she moved on. And, and two of our positions are usually fresh out of college, and um, she wanted she's ready to uh, pursue uh, her acting career and um, and I'm happy to say she's in eastern propane ads all across Massachusetts right now and it was an exciting story that she said you know I got to get married and uh, and buy a house and then have you know plan all this all in one little commercial so her life got set right into motion just by one job but um, I've, I've looked it up, and, I, and she's, you know, she's you know, getting a lot more freelance uh, acting jobs. So um, that's exciting for her. Uh, Jonah was our youth outreach coordinator, and he did a great job with the kids. He um, uh, started up the, the um, high school program last year. We reported that at last annual meeting. And uh, both of those uh, employees had moved on uh, early in September, September, October. And... Um, and Gabby had already been planning to, you know, give her notice. And then when, when Jonah had, you know, said he, he was given his, she actually 
delayed her plans. Uh, she didn't tell me this until, you know, until she gave me her notice. But she's like, I stayed on for an extra, you know, month just to make sure that we were okay and whatnot. So, I mean, she's, uh, and she's still active. She uh, volunteers uh, to do camera work for, um, I'm drawing the blank, um, Kindness, Kindness Collaborative. Um, so she's still uh, working on videos with them. So it's great to see her uh, in and out. And this year we added um, uh, Nick and Yasmina. So, uh, and I'm telling you, this staff uh, has gelled instantly. And Yasmina's done a, a, a great job with the workshops. And she's got more of a, a short film background. And so our, our workshops have um, come to uh, more, more film oriented and, and production based on that. And the, and the middle schoolers gravitate to that. And they love the creativity and the production. And uh, the excitement since our first round of workshops, uh, we have kids in here every afternoon after school uh, on their own time, not even in our workshop time. So they come back and do stuff. So um, to me, that's the, that's the, the core of what we do is, is, you know, whet their appetite and get them back in here to, to work on stuff they're interested in. And then our interns uh, throughout the year, um, and Do Dominic Neger is going to come back this summer. Uh, and, um, and work on more uh, new stuff. So it's, uh, he had a great time last summer. Um, moving right on, um, membership is pretty much on pace. It's kind of very similar. We went down, I think last year we were at 164 total. Uh, adults, um, adults were the same. Youth dropped off by about 10, and basically because when we were short-staffed on the, the fall, we decided to skip some of the community programs workshops. And um, usually we pick up a handful of kids uh, during those workshops, so um, negligible. Um, but the exciting part is when we look at our chart of uh, membership numbers versus volunteers, we always love to see the volunteers actually go up even though our membership went down. So um, we, we dropped from 162 to 146. But our volunteer uh, actual active members went from 66 to 75. So, you know, kicking the tires, it's quality, quality members. Um, uh, we, we like the, uh, the interaction. Uh, organizations that joined this year, Hel Healthy Coaches Kitchen and Merrimack Valley Toastmasters. Uh, Toastmasters um, joined as a member and they use our conference room and that's okay with us. Um, so the more people we get in the door, um, they see the, the studio and, and the opportunities that are here. So they're here every other week, and um, it's, it's nice to have them. All right. I don't have any of my talking points. My goodness. All right. Performance. Uh, so all the kind of engagements we had last year, um, we talked about this in the beginning. Uh, at last, last year, we're, we're trying to engage in the performance spaces around the community. So the theater at the high school, the theater at the middle school, and as we learn, there's, there's more and more places. The, the, the senior center also has a nice big room now that there's uh, performance opportunities there. Maybe that gets worked into the fold, the warden theater. A um, lot of performances there. That could be in our long-term goal also. Um, I do have to say, we, we, I, feel, I do feel like we're we're the third year in year one. Um, there's a lot of changes at, this, at the school system. So we, we had a good first full year last year, but then they changed their, the, the contact person at the, or the take-in person at the school administrative building. And it's almost like now I'm teaching her all that we learned last year and we're kind of starting from scratch and, and she wanted to do things different. And it's, it's all acceptable. It's just, but we're, we're not moving as, far forward as I'd like, um, but we are, there's, there's a lot of potential there, and we'll get into that uh, with, with when we get into revenue, but, um, you know, we're looking for other opportunities to generate re revenue, and if we can do simple management stuff and maybe sell a little bit of advertising to recoup some of that uh, uh, effort, um, that's kind of the purpose, but there's also, it's fixing a need in the town with uh, a lot of these performance spaces being run by the kids as they learn, which is great, but there, there has not been any adult oversight in any of these uh, positions. So that's what we're trying to uh, normalize. Uh, we reported last year that the senior center, uh, remote, the new building, we had a robo robotic 
uh, camera installation going in there. And there was a lot of construction uh, curves, uh, curve balls that went through. So, it, you know, we kind of installed what we had to, but we backed out until the building got finished and we could just go in after all the contractors are there. That project is complete. We've, um, we've, we've done, um, to, in that, in 2023, we did two, maybe three um, meetings in there, tri-board meetings, that type of thing. And we're still learning the acoustics of the room and what we want to change, but uh, they were successful. Everything went off without a hitch. Um, just some creature comforts in the room that we're trying to tweak out, but uh, it is a viable meeting location for the town. So now we have three, the select board room at Town Hall, the school admin building at the school administration building, and now the senior center, which can handle public hearings and bigger crowds and whatnot. Um, Another neat thing, sticking on GovCam and some of our uh, government responsibilities as we run the gov government channel is a unique project that came across uh, this past year, early last year, was uh, 400 Great Pond Road. And there was a vote at town meeting to, to handle the, the property one way or another. Um, and they, the town came looking to us, I think it was the planning board that came looking to us saying, hey, it's a lot easier to show this condition of this building and you know where it's at rather than you know pictures and and let's do a walking tour and and how you know communicate this during one of the public meetings uh with a lot more commentary and a lot of you know pointing and hands on almost like a this old house type of thing you know walking through so we we spent a you know a better part of a, a month you know working on them prepping for this meeting they rolled it at the meeting. It's also online, uh, so that people could have a more informed approach to their votes as they as they approached it. So uh, that was an exciting and you know pretty intense you know project with drive-bys and you know driving down to the facility to show the slope. Um, it was it was exciting, and, and I like when they want to put the attention to some stuff like that. We um, we uh, we came to task, uh, and it it helped them immensely. So. As far as what the vote did, one way or another, I don't live in town, so I don't. I just I want to I want to know about production and, and how I can help. So, um, the youth center um, last year we, we reported that Cam White was uh, re a member of ours. Ended up working at uh, when he was younger. Ended up working at the youth center, and then sure enough, we said Cam is back. Uh, and his whole time there, he ran workshops. Uh, here with the youth center and I think it was uh, a solid year of, of, of um, content and it's great and now I think he's moved on to another job so we'll see if uh, we still have the same engagement with the youth center it really is staff based with the youth center because they do so much over there uh, they offer so many programs so when we when we get somebody that's interested in TV we usually um, get a lot of uh, attention uh, podcasts we had three we had four podcasts I'm gonna do this by memory because I left my notes somewhere else, is uh, we had the superintendent uh, doing then um, uh, a, a podcast, nights, night side, thank you. And then the school, the um, athletic department did their nightly news, and the senior center did uh, a, a handful of um, podcasts uh, related to the senior living, and the last one was Expansive Minds, which was, you know, started off as a podcast, still is a podcast, but they ended up producing a TV show and taking the audio. It's, it's still on our podcast platform. Um, where are we? So that's podcast. So it is, it's engaging. Um, we're still growing in the podcast area. Uh, through your membership dollars, uh, just a reminder, all your membership fees go straight to uh, scholarships for the um, students here at the high school. Um, last we always report last year's because we don't want to spoil the surprise for for this year but um, uh, Elise Neely was our thousand uh, dollar recipient of scholarship last year so um, we only we she was the uh, viable candidate she's done a lot of stuff um, reporting back in on the old studio at the high school so we talked about there was plans of renovations uh, they did uh, totally remodel the area. It is now um, uh, the uh, graphics lab. So they have 26 stations in there. The studio itself, itself is still there, curtain and light grid. Most of the lights are out of there, but they, they, they might use it for, you know, 3D modeling and, you know, photography, that type of thing. 
um, but the actual uh, in you know the control room in that area is now a classroom uh, so it's good that they have use of it we're still working on our partnership and how we uh, connect with them uh, on on uh, student based stuff where are we uh, the athletic partnership is flourishing so S Steve Nugent was going to be here tonight he's tied up with something else is um, he, he took the job a couple years ago and out of all the athletic directors uh, he's been in he's been vested in this town he came through the system he he's been here and I think he'll be here for quite some time um, but he sees the value in us and he'll email the parents for us he'll make accommodations for our staff and just minor tweaks here and there when we feed our staff we're trying to do it through the snack shack now just to, to if we're gonna pay anybody we might as well pay the you know the program so we're just trying to support each other as much as possible We've done a lot of, spent a lot of time with um, helping them with the sound system in the gym. That's getting better. Um, stuff that they don't, you know, they don't have to spend money on with, with vendors if they don't. If we can, if we can tweak things that with our knowledge base, we're going to do that first. And it's, it seemed to yield some, some good results. The Warden Theater, um, remote location. So we're going to report it in order, I guess. So the Warden Theater. We started our partnership as COVID happened and we, we invested in the sound system and what a natural partnership with, we have creators of content, they have a big movie theater. Um, let's see how we can do it. So we've had, we've had film festivals in there. I think I have some yeah. images. Um, so this past year we had, uh, the, in November, we had the horror based one, uh, sci-fi film festival. And it was, I, maybe what all film festivals are, but like we go through this process of, of selecting them. Even though we did the selection, it went from $100 budget to the guy that hung out the longest had a $30,000 budget. And it was cool for them all to talk to each other because the guy with $30,000 budget said, hey, I was you like five years ago. It was $100 the first time. It was $1,000 the next time, it was $4,000, and then within five films, he got enough backing. And how inspiring it was it for these young filmmakers that were just tooling around in college and threw this thing together to see it, wa it wasn't, it was only like five or six year you know, difference between those two, those two um, crews. And how, you know, talking about how, even though he's a $30,000 budget, he'll go run sound on somebody else's film because they all, they all partner together at this level and they just want to create. Um, so, so seeing all that uh, on the big screen was great. That was a, that was a fun night. Um, the um, you know, comments from the, as, as the, the historical society is shaping itself, and I'm not going to speak for you guys, but um, they, um, you know, they said the theater's working. It's already done. Let's use it as much as possible to get people in the door. So um, we found some, we partnered with them to do the um, sci-fi in July and um, public domain movies, you know, it was fun. In, in the, the crowds that came out, you know, if, it, if the theater uh, holds about 75 people, we might have had 14 to 20 people in some of them, but they loved it. And it was just fun to see some of these old movies and the technology and the, the, the effects and stuff like that. It was, uh, it was fun to watch. It was a little challenging to get it to look good on the big screen, but we, we, got, it, we got it working. And uh, the sound worked out great. And um, in the, 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 the idea is to keep content playing on a regular basis. So the community, the, it, the culture's built that the community has an option to go watch something there on a certain night of the week or at least once a week. Um, and I'm going to joke about this a little bit. So we have our Brady Bunch box again. Um, the, the lectures right now at the at the Warren Theater, the partnership is great because there's so much content. And so as if we were watching the meetings for the select board and the planning board on our GovCam channel, it's a different meeting, it's a different topic, it's a, but it all, they all look the same. So when we, when we look up at the screen now, this is, you know, very similar to what we see almost every time because the screen's so big, you can see the content of the, the slideshow so it almost makes sense to keep the little person in the corner and the big slideshow and, you know, every once in a while go to a, a close up. But um, the, the variety of information uh, that, that comes through there, uh, we have all the tools, they have all the content. So it's just a natural um, partnership. Um, but our, our access channel is starting to look 
like the government channel was very similar. You know, uh, oh, that's the Warren Theater. Ooh, the little you know white thing in the corner. That's the screen in the Warren Theater. Um, but we um, so now moving forward this year, we actually realized there was so much content from uh, from the first run at this. We were bringing in cameras, uh, setting up gear, or getting ready to to live stream it with with the big rig. Um, we have since the, the board approved that we um, hard install cameras in the location. So all we do now is bring in a laptop this big and a couple sound pieces, and it's a lot less cumbersome to come in there and, and, and do it. And um, there's been so much more content this year already. I can't wait to tell you about it next year. <laughs> um, but it is a growing partnership, and there's just so much content. With the, the, um, on the year in review, the Black History Month uh, content. Uh, the producers of those events were so detailed, and they brought in so many guests. It was, it was like high quality uh, information and, and, and entertainment. The singers, uh, you know, everything it was very well done. So, the fact that we're able to capture this without uh, blinking an eye is uh, great. All right, so I'm stopping here. The, so my next thing on the list was last year was the North Andover Journal, um, our long running news show. It, we, we started to migrate into like more of a magazine format. So um, it, where before it was just news, even though news is 30 seconds to a minute stories, we were one to three minutes on our stories, which is eons compared to a, you know, a news channel. Um, we went to a magazine format, and in our world, that was like eight to 10 minute type stories. So I believe we have a clip to roll. I'm going to try and turn up this. And this was an example of uh, our intern, um, Dominic Nager, who, um, who spent the time with the journal last summer, and he put together one of our bigger pieces for a little gem in North Andover. Um, let's see if I can get those guys to roll that. Throughout the 60s, missile defense was a really big topic. If this hadn't been canceled, this building probably would have been built within a year or two. The, the word from the government was you should build bomb shelters. And so my, our, we had two neighbors who about that time built their houses, and in the basement there are bomb shelters. You can imagine why people might be opposed to this. There's the safety issues, the, just the concept of having nukes stored near you, but uh, you know, also the idea that this could make the area a target. People started pulling politicians into this cause, and one of those politicians was Senator Kennedy. And um, this must have been quite effective because within maybe like a month of Senator Kennedy becoming involved was the program put on hold and reevaluated by the new Nixon administration. Um, so just a snippet. Uh, we we're going to make you watch the 10 minute video. But, um, but just the level of uh, research that went into it. He got a lot of archive stuff. He went to Google Maps with a 3D rendering and, you know, a lot of in some even public domain military footage that, you know, it was it was it was fun. Um, so that was great as we hit the summer, but then as I explained before, then the staff rolled over uh, at September. So we kind of, you know, the, the journal is, as much as it is a, a, a great tool for the community, um, it is like a lost leader for us where we want it to be a citizen's journalism show that somebody takes on. So every, t every journal we do is great for the community, but it's kind of like we're just waiting for somebody to really grab onto it and produce it and we'll be there for support. Um, then you can get a little bit more into you know journalism and both sides of the story. Most of our journal stories are, um, you know, great happenings around town, promotional type things. Um, but you know, if there's a watchdog out there and we want to get a news show going, you know, that's that's again we're here for the members and the community to to produce content. So um, that's where we are at that. So. We, um, that's kind of you know, a good snapshot for um, some of the, the bigger engagements throughout the year. If I move on to um, our funding and support um, for, the, for the year, uh, again, our revenue comes from uh, the gross annual revenue of your cable bills, uh, Comcast and Verizon, we get 4% of that gross annual revenue, and that's the primary uh, source of all uh, funding for cable access channels. So just looking at the slide real quick, 316,000 out of Comcast, 160, 160,000 out of uh, Verizon. Uh, there are capital grants uh, that come along with those that are you know, restricted for just capital purchases. Um, 
24,000 from Comcast. Typically, we get the, sim the same amounts out of Verizon. Um, we're in a, a, a negotiating year um, where Verizon's contract was up in June and of, of 2023 and Comcast is, was up this, this February. Um, the Cable Advisor Committee and the attorneys, you know, and the, the, the condition of the, the market now uh, as far as where, where these cable companies are in renewals. Um, so Verizon still hasn't been renewed. Uh, the operating funding continues as a vehicle of the contract, but capital is considered uh, a request from that bound time period. So that doesn't continue on on its own. So that's why you see a drop in the Verizon numbers. Um, you can see that Ver Comcast is the uh, primary source of the income, and that's basically on subscribers. So there's more Comcast, sub more Comcast subscribers in the community of North Andover than there, than there are of Verizon. The other funding uh, is typically membership dues, workshop fees, and um, this year we decided um, to, to, you know, as the rates come up with uh, CDs and, and, and vehicles like that, we invested and that bumped up uh, a lot of our uh, investments uh, for uh, other income. Total expenses on the year were 443000 and uh, at this time our, our CPA and system company are still in the process of our uh, audit. We're, we're audited every year. We're ma we make over a certain, we take in a, 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 over a certain amount, so it declares that we need an audit. So we, we are fully audited every year. And uh, they're still in that process. Um, the, what I just want to make sure, the, the board has seen this uh, graph a lot, um, but it's important to, as we go back to some of our funding vehicles and our adventures, adventures with um, performance-based management and why we want alternate funding, uh, prior to Netflix and over-the-top type things and all the cord cutters, so if you look at the chart on this side of 2018, you know, our, our, our income is slowly going up with the cable bills. But as subscribers drop off, um, and these jumps are uh, new contracts. So at, at 2014, Verizon signed on, and there was kind of like a back payment as, you know, we'll probably get a back payment as, as, as um, they trigger the, uh, the thing. Uh, Comcast renewed, or no, Verizon renewed here again. Um, so that's what these little spikes are. But in, we went from 2.7 gross annual revenue here to 4%. So that's why it jumps up completely because there was a negotiation that we got a bigger slice of the pie. Um, uh, in this year, we're, we're trying to get to the max, which is 5% of their gross a annual revenue. Um, so, but as you see before all those streaming services, we're you know, steadily inclining, not by much, but it's definitely an incline. And then post, you start to see the decline. Now. North Andover, we're a little bit shielded because it's an older population. It's a, it's a suburban population. Um, so our funding is not dropping off as dramatically as a lot of our sister stations. Cambridge, Millennials, all that stuff that are cutting the cord left and right, they're seeing 5%, 10% you know, reductions uh, on, on the whole. Um, and they're struggling a lot. So we are a little bit shielded just because we don't have a ton of population that's that's cutting that entire cord, um, but it is you know when you, we talk about funding nonprofits or any kind of you know huge funding change, it's like steering a ship, like an ocean liner. It doesn't turn on a dime. So we're trying to feel out what kind of vehicles can we do. That's why we came up with the performance-based management. Um, we're also talking about um, doing business partnerships. And so we ventured out this year, I think we announced it last year, about trying to do like a paid service where local businesses, which you know, could be a mom and pop shop, you know, they can join as a member and produce all the content they want, but if it's a mom and pop shop, they're mom and pop shopping it 24 seven, they don't have time to come here and do a commercial. So what's the value of you know, a couple thousand dollars, we'll produce it for them. You know? but we have to balance it with our mission because our mission is based on serving the community, serving the town. Uh, they do still have to come first uh, with a staff of four. 
right? So if we had a staff of 20, we could take one or two people and put it to the for-profit type of thing, uh, or the revenue, I shouldn't say for-profit, but for the revenue generating. And um, so I found a, uh, a company I knew very well, Don Scientech, and I said, look, we're trying to do this, and we've known each other for years, and we've gone through, you know, volunteer stuff together and, and merchants associates and stuff together. I said, we're trying to do this, but I don't know how it's going to go. Do you have money in your budget? Do you want to do this? Do you, when she'd always, she and I had always talked about this years past, oh, you should just do this service. And um, so I said, hey, remember how you said we should always do the service? And she was very gracious and we, we, it all lined up with her budget. And um, the concept is for some thousands of dollars, we decided on two. Um, it could be five, you know, in the long run if we get this down. Uh, we produce four quality pr commercials that can be aired on guaranteed live big events, the League of Women Voters Candidates Forum, big, wa highly watched, um, you too, you were, you were back then too. Um, b you know, a lot of eyeballs on that, you know, town meeting or annual meeting or Santa Show. Santa Show is one of the bigger uh, watch shows. You know, get eyeballs on it. And then as well, it's always running on the channel. They can also use it on their websites and stuff like that. So, sound like a great, great idea, still is a good idea, but you, we started production and it was a good year and a half later before you know, Nick came in, in November. Uh, I think we started at last October and I said, Nick, you got production experience? Great. Just edit these commercials for me. <laughs> you know? But things happen. Like, we just got, we got pulled into town, we got pulled into this. Staff, if we go down one staff, then the workload shifts incredibly. So. It's a, it's a work in progress, um, but again, steering that big ship, we've dipped our toe in the water, we've seen what it takes, now we've kind of earmarked a little bit of what issues we need to think about if we're gonna do this. Um, but there's some, uh, I think we have an example, I think I've talked long enough for you guys to cue it up. So we have one of those commercials to show and uh, add value to her uh, investment in the, in, the, um, in the venture. Welcome to Don's Sign Tech in beautiful North Andover. We are a service-focused sign company. We love helping businesses achieve their goals and how they perceive their business to be seen by their clients. So as a resident of North Andover and a business owner in North Andover, as a sign company in North Andover, I want to see my product in North Andover. It makes you feel very proud, you know, that you can look around town and know that you've had that kind of an impact and that there are that many people coming to you and looking to you for help. The officials in the town trust me. They know the level of insurance I'm carrying. They know my level of integrity. And so they, they refer people to me. We're reflecting that community value and we're very proud to be part of it. It's about the quality. It's about the attentiveness. It's about the care that people have for one another. So decent quality commercial. Um, not something you, you see like Comcast. Oh. Our, our, our provider is providing. Um, but uh, again, uh, she, you know, she, all, she, she was a cordial uh, uh, client to start this with, but also not necessarily the, the model company we're looking for, because, and we talked about this from the start, she's a business to business company. And, and like having something a little bit more personal in a town community, if if the if the business is business to consumer, it can be North Andover based, you know. But she also needs uh, something that's a little bit more generic and not North Andover because she's a little bit more Massachusetts based and whatnot. So, but we recognize that right from the beginning, and then we we figured out how to how to navigate that a little bit, and um, and then she still has pieces that she can use uh, based on the content that we shot. Um, all right, so we already talked about cord cutting. Uh, we're talking about the license renewal. We are in the final phases of the license renewal and hopefully uh, it works out that we're, um, we, we start to get back to the, the, um, the engaged contract and we go forward from there. The other uh, possible future funding is the mass streaming tax. We talked about that. Uh, we probably introduced it last year. Again, a quick snapshot of that. Other states have already done it, but our funding comes through those companies, which you know as your bundle, but we only get the funding of the TV portion. So if you have internet, that doesn't affect us. You know, so um, other states have taken that into consideration, and, and you're still streaming content over these networks. So how do we still support cable te uh, community television? 
So they've introduced uh, streaming taxes for Netflix or the, the streaming providers. I shouldn't probably you know, name everybody. Um, so having the metric to be able to uh, do all that is uh, in the way they carved up the pie, I believe, is 40% um, to us, uh, community television, 40% to the municipality, and 20% and to the state. And we proposed it the other way where we got the 20%, but the state actually changed it around. So that was kind of favorable. But it's been in committees for years, and we're, we're getting close. But there's, there's a good uh, possibility that. And that's not giant, but it's a little uh, enough to offset some of the losses of the court covers. I believe that's any questions on any of the funding stuff before I go forward? All right. And then what's next? Um, 2024, sports right on top. Um, elevating sports coverage, the, cu the culture of coverage. Um, we're just, we're trying to find alumni, right? So alumni commentators, we can cover all the sports we want, but if they're not commentating, uh, it's, it's not as appealing. So we're trying to just, again, I like to say we channel community spirit. That's what we do nowadays. We're not, we're not the fancy TV studio. We're not, you know, everybody can create content right here. So the, the lure of the TV studio and all our editing gear is not where it's at anymore. It's about community, the community spirit, really like capturing that and how do we encourage it. Uh, so getting the sports coverage uh, is more of a culture and, and getting people interested to come back and be part of the team or be a Scarlet Knight again. Uh, just to, and, and I tell you, the guys that are doing it raised back here, they, they just thrive on, on, you know, looking up stats and, and connecting the other teams and how's the Merrimack Valley Conference doing, you know, compared to our team, you know. So it's, it's, it's so impressive um, with the, um, the, the depth of which they get into it. And they, they, they truly enjoy it. So we're trying to gain more volunteers to support the commentators, but we're also looking for more commentators that, that, that are out there. Right. And by broadcasting the Merrimack College basketball Christmas tournament, yes. Charlie Dayer's Commonwealth Chevrolet, uh, the big screen in there is constantly showing Commonwealth while we're showing the basketball. Right. Right. So. Yep. And they, they a lot of them. One they, way or another. They they, they support. Yeah. They bought. They uh, donated the scoreboards. Right. Um, uh, the historical society. We kind of talked about it already. They have content. Um, it's, 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 it's exciting and some of the, so the new executive director is here tonight, um, but they, they're reaching out to um, uh, the community again and, and finding other things to do. Um, the, the legacy project, uh, the leg legacy exhibit is, is fascinating. So we, they found a, a, a gentleman who worked on the NASA project uh, for Apollo. And he was, you know, he perfected the accelerometer and whatnot. We went and interviewed him for hours. Um, so, and that'll be a new exhibit in this, in this, in the uh, physical space. We get to show the content on our channel. Mission, mission accomplished, right? So both mission, missions are uh, re, uh, satisfied. Farm Legacy was a project that started in 2013, easily. Um, and there's about 25 hours of content that has been recorded since then. Um, and Michael Smolak came out of the woodwork again and said, hey, let's, let's do something with all that uh, content. So uh, we're in the infant stages of that. I like when projects are uh, looking forward and saying, hey, let's launch this next year because that gives us time to plan it properly and produce it properly. Um, so we've, um, you know, and it gave me a chance to reach out to a, a member, one of my first members that I met. Uh, that started working on it, and uh, and she's back engaged. So this is it's just uh, just wonderful to to see the the depth of the content that we can uh, engage with. So uh, interviews, um, edited packages, and uh, and release dates and showings. So again, this is another warden theater thing. So the historical society has a, a concept, but it also becomes a matinee, you know, something to actually draw people in on on a certain event. Uh, everybody wins in that situation. Uh, veterans, uh, we've started um, a, a project with, uh, I'm going to say veterans, uh, what, oh, what is it? veterans, I had a, a buzzword because it's not, it's anything associated with veterans and uh, veteran services because it's, it's VFW, it's the Patriot Observance Committee, it's, it's VSO, 
Um, the one thing about the veterans culture is they remember to reach out to us. And that's all we ask people to do, reach out to us and see what we can do. We'll find volunteers, we'll do stuff. Uh, uh, Wreaths Across America um, is uh, another long-term project. It's, it's scheduled for December 14th, but uh, Bill Dolan, our old uh, prior fire chief, reached out to us and said, hey, I wanna do this. Uh, Selectmen were on board, he got all these approvals and said, let's do this and, um, and, and can you help us? So we figured out a way to do it. We went out and shot uh, a lot of footage, but in a nutshell, uh, and you guys can jump in if you want, but uh, if I get it wrong, but, but so Reese Across America is like National Night Out. It happens across the country every year. North Andover is now joining in on this thing that happens all across the, the, the country on, on December 14th. Um, and basically they look for volunteer, they look for um, people to buy the wreaths. I think it's $18. And so that you can donate to, to buy the wreath. And they're also looking for volunteers to actually lay the wreath and um, and it all happens on December uh, 14th trucks roll in they you know it's a pretty big fanfare um, you'll see we're gonna roll a video but they um, they come in and the concept behind the whole thing is um, when you lay the wreath you say the, the the soldier's name and they're now remembered and they're still in our society you know is that it's not as eloquent as is it's put um, but it's, it's just a mission across the country to, to just remember our, our, our soldiers. Um, so that's a, you know, we're going to release a video every month. So we have a, a little hybrid of a couple of the ones that we've done. And I think we're going to roll that now. My name is Jeff Clark and I'm the commander of the North Andover VFW. This year, the town of North Andover and our VFW have partnered with Wreaths Across America, an organization to honor the veterans of our beloved community. Wreaths Across America is an organization dedicated to remembering and honoring the veterans of the United States while educating our communities about the sacrifices made by our men and women in uniform. This year, we are placing over 1,500 wreaths at Ridgewood Cemetery on December 14th at 12 p.m. Each wreath costs $17, of which $5 comes back to the VFW. As a nonprofit organization, all proceeds will be utilized to support the veterans of our community and their needs. Please help us spread the word about this amazing organization and opportunity for this community. We hope you can make it to Ridgewood Cemetery on Saturday, December 14th at 12 p.m. for our opening ceremonies and immediately following the laying of the wreaths. This is a wonderful opportunity for our community to come together during the holiday season and ensuring that veterans are not forgotten. Frank S. Guile, Landsman, United States Navy, Conflict, the Civil War. In war, no one sets out to be a hero. And yet, at the end of every deployment, every battle, every war, there are heroes, sung and unsung. In English, we have one word that stands apart from bravery, apart from gallantry, and apart from selflessness apart even from courage beyond the call of duty. Valor. In the United States, we recognize uncommon valor with the Medal of Honor. Not too far inside the main gate of Ridgewood Cemetery, there is a bronze plaque, flanked by flags on each side with a five-pointed star in the middle. Underneath is the name Frank S. Guile. And below his name are the three inscribed words that read, Medal of honor. For most of us, stories of the Civil War sit in the dim pages of our school books. Yet every so often, a story, once rediscovered, becomes riveting. So it is with the story of Frank S. Guile, Medal of Honor recipient for action in 1863 during the Civil War. Here's a picture of Private Albert E. Thompson. After my visit, I presented at the Thompson School. The press covered it, and all of a sudden, we had people saying, Private Albert E. Thompson is a relative of mine. And they sent us this wonderful photo, which now hangs in the office of the Private Albert E. Thompson School at 266 Waverly Road. This here 
is the Western Union telegram sent to Private Albert E. Thompson's mother upon his passing. You see, it was originally sent to a farm in Amesbury, and it took probably about four months uh, to make the notification to his mother that he was killed in action by the time it made it back to, to 60 Railroad Avenue, now Waverly Road, between Maple Avenue and Main Street. In the 20s, 1920s that is, um, the French government paid for gold star mothers such as Miss Thompson to go over to France and to see where her son was buried. And that's Mrs. Thompson here. We need to raise $26,350 to purchase all the wreaths for the 1,550 veterans who are buried at the Ridgewood Cemetery. We need to raise this money by December 3rd. If successful, we intend to include all North Annabelle cemeteries in future years. Live with purpose and please participate on December 14th. Amazing project. I mean, it just, you know, when you, when you hear some of the details uh, of some of these, you know, we've, we've heard these names through some of the different ceremonies throughout town, but, you know, to see it in a snapshot like this, you know, it's just moving. You know, in, in, in this, this is a chance for everybody in the community, outside of the community, um, to, to, to support this endeavor. So um, I, I fell in love with this project, and that's why I included it in the annual meeting, <laughs> just to, again, help promote it. So um, spread the word. Um, it, it's all, it's, uh, all these videos are online, too. Um, so please spread the word, and uh, let's see if we can get this off the ground uh, for this year and make it a successful endeavor. It's a, it's a lot of... It's a lot of reefs. It's a lot of reefs, that's all I have to say. But um, it's, it's exciting. And uh, keep an eye out for more videos. So we have we've completed, we're doing one a month and uh, we're, we're into our third one now. So um, moving forward for the year, uh, again, we'll restart the journal, whether we decide on magazine style or you know, go back to new style and work our way back up to magazine style. And then, um, and then as far as GovCam, we've talked about it for a handful of years, COVID hit, um, but the town also wants to do some, some promotional commercials for the town, whether it's, hey, come to North Andover, put it on their website, on the channels. Um, you know, even, you know, promotional videos to encourage people to work at, the, at the, the, the town, you know, that type of thing. So a lot of public relations type stuff that we can uh, run on the channels and uh, they can use on their website. Um, and I think that's going to do it for my report. Um, it's a lot. Um, I try to do it as speedily as possible without sounding too rushed and panicked. Um, any questions, concerns, um, anything from anybody? No? No? Thank you. Um, Brian, I just want to say thank you for adding the Reese Cross America. Yeah. Um, no, I, good job. Yeah. No, and like I said, go watch the full videos because they're they are impactful. They are very impactful. Um, none of this stuff we couldn't do without uh, the board. Uh, the board supports us fully, and is you know they meet. We try and meet once a month, give or take, but once a month we're we're going over stuff. Um, and partners, um, this is a prime example. Reese Across America, uh, the Warden Theater. Um, we volunteer a lot of, I volunteer a lot of my time over there. So we do stuff as a partnership with CAM. But right now, um, we talked about the, uh, the performance space management. You know, if for some, you know, in three years, we're paying contractors to do stuff at the high school, maybe it folds into running content at, at the events at the museum. Um, but with the partnership now and, and the stuff I'm volunteering with over there, they've, you know, the Historical Society became a partner with Reese Across America, and now they run that, that video in front of any event that's happening in the movie theater. So again, all different eyes on different things, and we're just trying to wrap the community together as much as possible. So um, every, everywhere I go, it's, it's how do I connect you know, one group with another. Eventually, we'll get my poker show together at some point, but we're getting closer and closer. But that's a fun event. Um, that's it for our executive report. I do think we have business to do. Let's see, treasurers, elections. All right, so uh, every year we have to uh, elect uh, our, our board chair, uh, our, our vacant or our expiring board chair. 
Uh, we reached out um, to just see if there was anybody was interested, but the slate of candidates ended up uh, uh, reappointing or at least putting forward uh, Linda to um, step forward as, as uh, for re-election. Do you want to say any anything about your time here and that your your interest in, in being on the board? Hmm. Um, no, I, again, it's been great to be on the board. This was my first term. It, the three years flew by. I can't believe it's yeah. been three years. I yeah. thought it was two for sure. Yeah. Um, no, it's uh, it's been great. I, I love still being involved. Um, I still, all the NAMA videos up there have been my work in the last uh, several years, but I'm continuing along with that as well. Um, but yeah, and I've actually started, a, I went back to work. Uh, my, my kids have uh, graduated from the North Andover High School now, so I've gone back to work. And as um, part of the work that I've done through the volunteer and also um, through CAM, um, business manager, but I'm also the video editor uh, and library uh, resource, um, I maintain the library resources for the company that I work for now. So that's been, it's been great to be able to parlay a volunteer interest in something that I've grown to love doing just as a volunteer into um, to benefit a company that I work for now so awesome. um, yeah so I would love to stay on the board uh, for the next three years excellent if you'll have me on you to call for a vote sir well I guess I make a motion to call for a vote on Linda's do presence have, on the board do we have a motion, a motion motion from the membership is it, is it? there you go all in favor say aye, aye. 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 excellent Someday Thank we'll you. get a no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Um, all right, so that's our business business. And I think we're going to move on to awards. We like to do awards uh, to recognize some of our members for their accomplishments. Uh, it's very rare that the board gets a, a, an award. It's, it's like, like almost never. So I just want to make sure that it's, it's not me. It's just what I've been told. Um, <laughs> So we like to um, we, we like to um, recognize, uh, especially our volunteers, um, for the amount of hours that they spend and volunteer. And um, I, I do believe I'm not sure if it's a repeat. I'm pretty sure it's a repeat. But our adult volunteer of the year. Oh wait. Oh, <laughs> all right. I'm doing. I'm got out of order here. Our volunteer of the year. Uh, is Nick Kissel. Hang on. Stand on. All right. This was supposed to be the, the pinnacle award. So um, every time we, every year, every generation, he's already been up here. Uh, he's already been up here once tonight. Um, come stand so maybe somebody else, the camera can see you. Um, it, it happens in a cycle, but we, we, we have a student that starts in grade school or middle school and then just kind of sticks around, hits one more chapter after another, volunteers one after another, uh, f learns one position or another, and then moves on and learns all the positions. So uh, all the way up through high school and then may or may not continue in college, but uh, brings that skill set forward uh, with them. So we are... Um, decided because we do have this repeating occurrence and, and Nick is that person this year or this five years. Um, there's, there's always a student that just kind of rises to the top. Um, so we're going to make a little memorial, uh, memoriam out in the, in the lobby of like a plaque and, and backdate it to some of the other guys. But the, uh, this is going to be like our shining star award or rising star award. So you will forever be on the wall in North End of Cam with the others uh, like you in the past. But nine years uh, are worth it now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Congratulations. Any other speech? Any speech? Any speech? You good? Thanks, guys. It was fun. <laughs> All right. Let me see. I don't know if I can do this without spoiling any of the surprises here. Huh. All right. Ready? I'll just. I'm gonna see what. I'm gonna spin the wheel and see what comes up. <laughs> All right, and newcomer of the year, Jackson Ziegler. Everyone's in there. 
if he's, is he, I'm not sure, he was in the, con oh, there he is, you can come, you can come up, yeah, you can only this one time abandon your post. <laughs> I don't let the camera people sit, like, you camera people don't sit, they don't need chairs, <laughs> come on up. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's uh, awesome seeing you here, and uh, hopefully, I don't want to spill the beans, but maybe he's the next. Get kissed. No. Awesome. Thank you. All right, here we go. Next up, Evan Zimmer, North Andover Middle School. Uh, most most hours for a middle schooler, and I don't believe he's here this evening, but we will. Yep, he's right. All right, and uh, North Andover High School Youth Volunteer of the Year, Amberly Sheffalo. Uh, she is also not here this evening, but um, she's here every Tuesday. And uh, her, watch her shows. They they variety of information, and she's very opinionated, and we love that. Next up. Adult Volunteer of the Year for, I believe, the second year in a row, yes. Kevin Mange. I'm glad you could come make it here tonight. There you go. Do you have this? Do you have last year's on the wall? Did you hang it up? Um, <laughs> maybe I have. Maybe I didn't. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. Do you want to say a few words? Um, you don't have to, but you're welcome to. I think I lost a thought. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. We love having you here, and I can't wait to see you next Tuesday. Watch the, watch the steps so you don't fall off. Thank you. Congratulations, Kevin. And that's it. Okay. Whew. Um, so no, we, uh, so it was supposed to be the highlight of our award ceremony, but we do, we'd like to make a plaque for some of those uh, students that do just stick with us. Uh, I'm going to rattle off some names, but um, uh, Nick Kissel, Yafim Schneiderman, um, our first one was Ben Pastor, I'm going to forget somebody, but, um, but yeah, there's just the, the, the kids that just lock into it. Um, I was one of those kids in high school where I, I you know, I wasn't in the school uh, and when TV class, I had TV class for four years as an elective and it got me engaged and everything and um, I quickly outgrew my, my TV teacher who was the farmer in town. It's <laughs> not usually a regular combination, but, um, but uh, and then I went on to the, you know, I went downstairs and talked to the engineer and I just got, you know, and I learned all that stuff and, you know, and then I went off to college and and, uh, and, and now I'm here, so um, it's just, it's exciting. That, and the one thing about this career, and you guys can, you know, wax on this if you want, but like every job you may do the same thing every day, right? So you might, if you're, if you're at your desk, you're typing all the time. We do the same stuff every day, but the content which we use or is in front of us changes dramatically. You know, and, and community access is one thing, but even, you know, out in commercial land, it's cars, it's toxic waste, it's, it's you know, a borer, you know, the a borer lights, you know, the, it, it, it keeps you fresh, even though you're using the same craft every day. So um, it's exciting. So um, that's all I have for this evening. Any comments, any questions? Um, it's, it's great seeing everybody here. I see veterans here. I see the, the Historical Society here. Thank you for supporting us. Ray with sports, League of Women Voters, everybody. Um, uh, thank you for being here. Thank you to the board, and um, thanks thank for letting you. thanks for letting me do nice what we do. I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. And we'll see you next year. We'll see you next year. <laughs>